Hello and welcome to Shea Stadium in New York where the temperature is 45 degrees. It has been raining all morning, a 70% chance of rain this afternoon. But the baseball strike is over and Major League Baseball is back with us as of today. And the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates have come to New York to face the New York Mets. Hello and welcome to Chile, New York. I'm Jim Simpson along with Sandy Koufax and the booing you hear in the background, Sandy, is not for us, but rather for the Pittsburgh Pirates, the world champions. So of course, they're world champions two years after the New York Mets. But Sandy, the big topic of conversation is the fact that the baseball strike is over. Today is the first day. And now for two weeks, nobody has really worked out, at least has not been in competition. Now you and I were in the locker rooms of both the Pirates and the Mets. And everybody had a different idea of what effect it's going to have on the players. I think, Jim, at the start of the season, everybody says the pitchers are ahead of the hitters. I think it's probably still true. The only problem will be if a pitcher beats himself. Uh, normally, they'd come from spring training. They'd be a little sharper than they are now. I'm sure that most of them will still have good stuff, but it's a question of their control. If they get themselves into trouble, well, then, you know, maybe they can get hurt. But I, I think... It's still the, the hitters who are going to be hurt worse this first week of the season. I think the people who will suffer most by the strike are the people who don't play regularly. The fellow who would play most in spring training, maybe play four or five innings a day in the spring, but won't play the first two weeks of the season, well, it might be a month before he gets into a ball game. Your seventh, eighth, ninth pitchers on a staff, your utility men. It's going to be awfully tough for them to get back into shape. Well, Sandy, since you are now a member of the Hall of Fame, uh, voted in this year, and since you have the four no-hitters and everything else, everybody knows about Sandy Koufax, and therefore everybody knows that you held out one year, and uh, you didn't go through any spring training, and then you came back and you pitched when, and how were you after that long layoff? Well, Jim, I, uh, I had a big problem there. I, uh, I didn't have spring training. I went out, and I, I guess we threw for a week, both Don Drysdale and I. The season started. I didn't start opening day. I started the second day. <laughs> How did you do? Well, next year I was a broadcast. <laughs> Sandy, the cheers you hear in the background now, the New York Mets, of course, are being introduced. Now let's talk injury. Uh, it is a very cold, overcast day today. They have not been in competition for two weeks. What about the little things that in the pennant race could become the big things? The muscle pulls, for example. Well, I think that's a big problem. Uh, I think a hitter who has not run hard probably i think a lot of the players will run to try and keep in shape they haven't run that hard uh, in a little slow ground ball between uh, short and third or between first and second it smells a little bit like a base hit there might be a tendency to run a little harder and possibly a hamstring muscle another problem is going to be today the outfield the mets have new grass in the outfield it's very muddy very soft the pirate outfielder, Willis Stargell, is just coming off a knee operation. He, uh, he could hurt himself rather badly. The other pirate coming off a knee operation, Gene Alley, isn't in the lineup, I think, because of the weather. Uh, looking down to the field now, the New York Mets have been introduced, so have the Pirates. And uh, in a moment, we're going to have some special ceremonies. But right now, baseball's game of the week will continue from Shea Stadium as the Pirates prepare to meet the New York Mets. Jim Simpson with Sandy Koufax back in New York, down on the field now, special ceremonies, and of course, Yogi Berra has taken over as the manager since Gil Hodges passed away on the eve of his 48th birthday. And in a moment, they're going to have a moment of silence for the gentle giant, longtime teammate of my colleague Sandy Koufax, and of course, his passing, it was quite a shock. Meantime, now, a floral wreath presented to Yogi Berra, who has stepped in to begin his tenure as the first uh, National League manager. First year of his managership. He managed for one year with the Yankees, of course, over in the American League. And there are two new National League managers. There, of course, is one. And the other is in the third base dugout in Bill Verdon. In the American League, of course, there are two new managers, of course. That's uh, Bear on the right, Verdon on the left, Ken Espermani of Cleveland, and Del Rice of California. Well, four new managers in Major League Baseball, which is starting about two weeks late. We will pause here now because we do not wish to miss the tribute to Gil Hodges. Oh, may 
The pregame ceremonies are over, including that tribute to the late Gil Hodge. As the 1970 season at last opened, days late, and without the wonderful personality and gentleman of the National League, Gil Hodges, the manager of the 1969 Miracle Mets, the manager until his death in spring training. Louis Kuhn, the commissioner of baseball, is here and will throw out the first ball. Jerry Grody awaits, and now the 1972 season is underway. Bill Verdon, the new manager of the Pirates, Yogi Berra, the new manager of the Mets, out meeting with the umpires, Ken Burkhart, home plate, Lee Wired first, Andy Olsen at second, Nick Stello at third, and now for the first time in 72 for a championship game, the New York Mets take the field. As Rennie Stennett stands in, against Tom Seaver, Cranepool is at first, Boswell at second, Harrelson at short, Pergosi at third, Jones in left, Tommy Agee in center, Staub of course in right, Grody the catcher, and Tom Seaver. Working on quite a string. In the last three years, he is 7-0 and against the Pirates and has not lost to them, as we said, and along the way has had quite an impressive record. Senate, who had a great spring, hitting more than 400, 409, fouls the first pitch off to the right. Last year, Seaver beat Doc Ellis about a year ago today, one to nothing on three hits, struck out 14 and walked nobody. Outside, it's one and one as Al Oliver is on deck. That is the bat boy right there. Breaking pitch, it's one ball, two strikes. There's Oliver, and then in September, 
Seaver beat the Pirates three to one and in 18 innings has allowed them one run four hits one walk and he struck out 24 that was last year at good succeed his fastball misses outside the balls two strikes to Stennett. So you have to look at Stennett uh, hitting 400 in the spring and believe that he might be for real the Pirates had him ineligible for the World Series last year but when he came up at the end of the year he hit 400 during the regular season. Well Tom Seaver who last year set a record for right handers in the National League with a strikeout 289 strikes out the first of 1972. First the all time league leader in the National League for strikeouts man to my right Sandy Koufax. Al Oliver hitting at 282 for last year but only 200 in spring training. Starts it all with a curveball in the dirt. Oliver is the one that says I want to play every day. Roberto Clemente. Fastball and there's the first base hit of the 1972 season. Oliver good fastball hitter a good low fastball hitter and that's even a low fastball pitcher uh, it was strength against strength and in this case Oliver won but it's going to be no fun for the hitters today Oliver looked like he hit that ball pretty good yet it stung him his hands were bothering him well here's Clemente 341 last year 86 RBIs and then in the World Series he hit 414 he has hit in 14 straight World Series games every only 14 he's been in the only man in history to do that Fastball foul back. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private, non commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Commissioner of Baseball is prohibited. One out, one on, top of the first, no score. Seaver facing Clemente. What a matchup. Two strikes to Clemente. That's what Clemente did last year, 341, and then at home, away, and against right and left handed pitchers. And Clemente strikes out. It, it looked like Seaver threw the ball very well to Roberto there, but he threw some pitches I don't think he wanted to throw. He threw a couple of high fastballs in the last pitch, a high slider that fooled Roberto, but I think that's, that might have been a little bit of a control problem on Tom's part uh, because of the layoff. Usually he'd like to keep his breaking ball down away, I would think. Oliver's on first as Willie starts 48 home runs. Last year, steps in. Get three home runs in the spring, takes a strike, Seaver is throwing strike. Remember a year ago, Stargell hit 11 home runs in the month of April to set a new major league record. He'll not have that chance this year unless he is just Mr. Wonder. Here it is, the 15th of April, and we're just starting. It is a cold day, and Richie Hebner hasn't even stepped out on deck yet with two outs. On away, one ball, two strikes to start. Here's Al Oliver, and that is Ed Cranepool, a Met since he was 17 years old, holding him on. Breaking pitch, and it is foul ball. Oliver will have to come back. That's Staub going into the corner. Again, Jim, I think uh, Seaver made a little bit of a mistake with the breaking ball. He got it up and didn't mean to get it, you know, right there for Stargell to hit it. Uh, you get away with pitches like that if sometimes you make them a little too bad. The ball was up and in, and Stargell, the only place he could hit it and hit it hard would be to pull it foul. Another breaking pitch and struck him out. He struck out the side. Oliver got a base hit. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We go to the last of the first inning with no score. Doc Ellis warms up. We'll have Sandy talk about Doc in a moment, but now about New York Mets order of lineup. Bud Harrelson leads it off at shortstop. Ken Boswell, the second baseman, bat second. He's unhappy about that. He says he doesn't get enough chance for RBIs. Tommy Agee out in center field, batting third. Rusty Staub, the newcomer from Montreal, the right fielder batting cleanup. Leon Jones, who perennially leads the team in batting average, batting fifth, playing left field. Jim Fregosi, the newcomer at third, bat sixth. Ed Cranepool, he's been at first base a long time, bat seventh. Catcher Jerry Cordy is eighth. Tom Seaver's ninth. 
And Doc Ellis will face Bud Harrelson. And Doc Ellis is good stuff. He's not overpowering with the fastball. His is a sinker type fastball. He has very good curveball and slider. But like most breaking ball pitches, Doc has to make his pitches. And uh, it's a question of how much the layoff may have hurt his control. Back at the knees to Harrelson, who hit at 152 during the spring. Here's Ellison Slomo. You take a look at Doc, and he's got good concentration. He stays on that catcher for a long time. Breaking pitches down low. One ball, one strike to Bud Harrelson. A lot of people around the National League will tell you that Harrelson, the top shortstop in the league, down in Philadelphia, they're beginning to disagree. They think they've got him, and Larry Boa will be seeing them all here on NBC's Game of the Week. Not out of play. They, of course, play Harrelson, who has great speed. Not much power. Straight away and very short. That is Ken Boswell on deck. Harrelson has hit two home runs in his life in the major leagues. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Ellis, of course, last year was 14 and three at the All-Star game. Started for the National League out in Detroit. One up 19 and nine. It meant that he was five and six over the second half of the season. Breaking pitch and struck him out. Sure, I think you can see something today that uh, usually you might question. Uh, there's a rule that the pitcher can't go to their mouth when they're on the mound. I think because of the weather, the umpire has said that the pitcher may blow on his hand without having to get off that circle in the middle of the diamond. So. Uh, there won't be any box call or ball call for a pitcher who goes to his mouth while he's still in that circle of the mound. I think both pitchers have been given that permission. Here's Boswell batting at 273 as far as last year's concerned, taking a strike 375 in the spring. Ebner in close to the grass. For Boswell in the last of the first inning. One out, none on, no score. Ground ball, first chance from infield. Slow roller, Robertson scoops to Adams, and there's one out. Here's Tommy Agee. 285 hitter last year, had his problems with his knee. Don Hahn had to substitute for him a great deal out in center field, but. Recovered now and hit 373 in the spring. Well, it is bitterly cold here in New York, baseball speaking, but what a thrill it is to be back and have the 1972 season underway. Breaking pitch strike. Around both leagues last year in October, they were saying that Doc Ellis, one of the finest pitchers in the league, both leagues, being unhappy with his hotel room and the beds in them. Several incidents involving Doc. Ground ball, a foul behind the plate. Timing the breaking pitch. Jim, I don't know about his hotel room, but uh, Doc's had good control here in this first inning, and usually that's a sign that it's going to continue. If a pitcher has control trouble, it's usually early in the ball game. That's Rusty Staub on deck. Foul out of play. Now you can tell about the weather. There are some empty seats here. Saturday, the beloved Mets of New York opening at home. Season delayed. They would have had a sellout here on their regular opener last Tuesday, but Combination of circumstances, mostly the weather, has kept the crowd down, and he looks at a third call strike. A one, two inning, three inning for Doc Ellis. And at the end of one inning play, Pittsburgh Pirates, the world champion. Nothing, and the New York Mets. Nothing. Is over at third base. That is Frank Osiak, the coach. And the fellow in the upper left-hand corner is at first base, and that is Don Leppard. Coaches for the Pirates as Rich Hepner. 271 hitter last year, but had 17 home runs and 67 RBIs. And for Ritchie, that's his best power year in the majors. Hebner also hit left-handers very well last year. No scores. We start the top of the second. 
batter. Ball misses outside. Seaver struck out the side, gave up a single to left on the fastball to Oliver in the first inning. One ball, one strike. Jim, watching the first inning, you'd have to think that that shortened spring training and shortened season hasn't affected anything too very much. Uh, both pitchers look like they're in pretty good shape ahead of the hitters. Uh, it's a question of stamina now. I don't think uh, that either manager wants the pitchers to go over six innings. So I think you can pretty much figure it's going to be a six inning ball game for the starters or maybe 80 or so pitches, whichever one comes first. And Tom Seaver, of course, Sandy, has been trying to stay in shape. But remember, Seaver is the player representative for the Mets. So in all of these strike talks and negotiations, Tom was not working out. He was working with the rest of the player reps. The ball's one strike to Hebner, now it's 2-2. Two -two. On deck is the smiling man, Manny Sandin. It's also going to be interesting in that in the negotiations, the American League convinced the National League to dump all of the games missed because for a long time, the American League has been trying to get the game back to about 154 games. The National League has resisted. They did not in this case, and we're interested to see over the winter whether they go back to 162, come back to 154, or what. The ball's two strikes. Fastball backs him out of there. It's three and two. It's the first full count we've had in the game. Gray and overcast with a lot of rain expected throughout the afternoon, night, and tomorrow here in New York. Burkhart, the umpire, behind home plate. Wire at first, Olsen at second, Stello at third. first-rate catch by a fan of the year. You know, I think uh, that's why all these balls foul back, why the fastball pitchers have to throw so many pitches in a ball game. Uh, there are usually a lot of balls fouled back out of play, and you just keep throwing the ball. That's Craneful making the putout. And it can't affect you late in the ball game on a hot day. Ebner is out at Manny Sanguian. Well, one of the real fine hitters on baseball today, Manny Sanguian. And as great a catcher as he is, they're still talking about perhaps moving Sandy into the outfield because Clement is going to retire someday because behind Sandy is young 21-year-old Milt May, who was quite a catcher himself and quite a hitting catcher. Rider for strike one. Sandy hit 319 last year. Did not have a good spring. Hit at 180. And the breaking pitch misses. Well, Manny wants all the help he can get. He's wearing two gloves. Ground ball up the middle. Harrelson after it can't get it. Second base hit off Tebow. I'm saying Gian really runs the ball out well. He runs very hard to first, makes the big turn. But outfielder is just a little lazy. You get to see his swing here. He's a very heavy bat, possibly the heaviest in the major leagues. He didn't hit the ball well. He got the big bounce. He got over Seaver's head out into center field. As I started to say, he really runs it out. And if the outfielder is just a little lazy and doesn't charge the ball, he's going to take two. You'll end up with him at second base. Bob Robertson swings, big swing, and miss. Robertson, 271 hitter last year, 26 home runs, and, well, he was one of the fabulous stars of the World Series. Third game of that series, Danny Murtaugh flashing the bunt sign. Robertson didn't see it, hit a three-run home run. Weaver pouring the fastball by him. Bob's a good low fastball hitter, and uh, I think Tom probably go with the the good hard stuff up high. Uh, he's capable of throwing very hard, and I think uh, that's the pitch that probably get Robertson. One ball, two strikes. Top of the second, one out. Sanguian at first, no score. This is a game I thought would never be played. Took a look at the weather this morning, and you say, no way. But here we are. Strike. Seaver has struck out man number four. Well, we said Number that two. Tom last year in two appearances against the Pirates struck out 24 men in the 18 innings. Gave up only one walk. Here's Jack Hernandez. 
Called on much of last year to fill in for the injured Gene Alley, who had knee surgery in the fall, and Hernandez is still here as the season opens. Alley not fully recovered. Base hit. Sanguian on his way around second. Staub is up, and Sanguian is going to walk right back to second base. Then at first and second, with the pitcher Doc Ellis up. Jim, on that play, uh, the fact that the pitcher is the next hitter is one of the reasons Sanguian really didn't try for the extra base. Uh, you're in a situation like this, you want to get that hitter to the plate, uh, the pitcher to the plate in this case, to get him out of the way a little bit. I don't feel like I'm insulting Doc, but I'm sure that uh, if you ask him, he'd tell you Stennett has a better chance of getting a base hit. And you start that next inning with your leadoff man again. And uh, if you get thrown out at third, well, the pitcher starts the inning. And it's, it's awfully tough to score runs when, you, when you're when you leading the pitcher off in an inning. Ellis hit 203 last year, which is by far and away the best year he ever had as a hitter. Takes a strike. Doc had 16 hits in 1971, and that is one more than he had in his three prior Major League years. Well, I think also uh, it, a lot depends on who you're hitting against. And in this case, Tom Seaver, uh, as a pitcher, <laughs> you may be a little overmatched hitting against Tommy. One ball, one strike. Well, we have 10 Monday night Major League games this year on NBC. And every Saturday from now on, the All Star Game, Championship Playoffs, World Series. Two balls, one strike. Down at second base is San Guillen. On at first is Hernandez. And on deck is Rennie Stennett. The man the odds would say will lead off the third inning instead of get the bat here, but we shall see. Ground ball. Fair ball. Seaver there for the easy play to first base. A little high, but Crane Poole comes down with it, and Seaver and the Mets are out of trouble. No runs on two hits. No errors. Two men left. We go to the last of the second inning still. The Pittsburgh Pirates nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Along with Sandy Koufax, this is Jim Simpson and the crowd here at Shea Stadium, which I would imagine when they hear the announcement will give quite an ovation to the batter about to come to the plate. Rusty Staub to make his first appearance as the New York Met. Here is last year's batting leaders against the Pirates. Leon Jones had the best year, of course, but and are all top hitters, Tommy A.G., Dave Marshall, and Cranepool, with only Marshall being used sparingly. But now here comes Rusty Stop, a ground around, and it looks like he's still in Montreal. It's cold, and he doesn't have long sleeves on. He's out of his mind. <laughs> the fellow that they expect to give the added punch that the Mets so sorely need. Hit 311 last year, 19 home runs, 97 RBIs at Jerry Park in Montreal. Takes a fastball from Doc Ellis, strike one. Backs him out of there, one ball, one strike. Jim, I hope we don't. Uh put any sort of uh, bad luck on Doc, but uh, I've got to think he's fully recovered from the elbow trouble he had last year. Just watching him in this inning, uh, last inning, and a little bit here, he's throwing harder than I saw him throw at any time at the end of last season. He, he's had an exceptional fastball today, and I didn't realize he threw that hard. Well, remember, we're calling again with Bill Burton's all of Sandy that his only problems when the strike began, which kind of slowed him up a little bit, not meaning Ellis, but the entire team were the knees of Stargell and Alley. Other than that, Pirates were right on schedule and said Ellis is throwing very well. One ball, two strikes to Staub, who grounds this one foul at the plate. Which would mean that the Pirates, defending champions, are really in the business. Leon Jones, also a 300 hitter a year ago, on deck. Can you imagine Cleon Jones and Tommy Agee on the same high school baseball team they were in Mobile, Alabama? I wonder if they ever lost a game. If they didn't have good pitching, they probably <laughs> did. <laughs> oh, smoking like a left-hander. Look out, Rusty. Two balls, two strikes. Last of the second, no score. Ellis got the Mets one, two, three in the last of the first. Oh. 
Base hit. What a way to make your debut. And Cleon Jones coming to bat. And as Cleon walks in, this program notes that NBC News will begin its 13-day coverage of the Apollo 16 flight by reporting events from Cape Kennedy and Mission Control in Houston. And liftoff, remember, is tomorrow, right here on NBC. Jones, a 200 hitter in the spring, but 319 last year, 14 home runs and 69 RBIs. His wife got him on ship to shore radio. He's fishing in Mobile Bay when the news the strike was over came in. Low ball one. Bottom of the second inning at Cincinnati, Dodgers lead the Reds 1-0. New York at Baltimore, it's raining, so much so they postpone the ball game. Strike. One and one. That is Jim Fergosi. And that is Rusty Starr. Two men with other teams last year sandwiched around the present batter, Leon Jones, who has a count of one and one. with the threat of rain and the fact that you've got a fellow like Tom Seaver pitching for you, there, there could be a tendency to try and get a run very early. And uh, if, if Ellis falls behind in the count, possibly to give Staub a chance to run and, and maybe uh, let Cleon swing on trying for the hit and run or whatever you can do to try and get a run early in the ballgame. There's a chance that this game may get rained on before it's over. and You want to give Seaver a lead as fast as you can. He usually doesn't need much. Going on the count, right up the middle, base hit. Play is right in front of Oliver, so Staub will stop at second. That's the punch they expected, and now Jim Fergosi. And believe it or not, I think we mentioned this at the outset, Fergosi becomes the 46th man that the New York Mets have put at third base to see whether or not he can hold it down. Fergosi with a lot of trouble last year, hit only 233. He had a nerve tumor on his right foot that finally required surgery. And then in the spring, he fractured his right thumb this year, but now his back says he's ready to play. Ball away, ball one. No score, two on, last to the second. strike. I think you can look down at the lineup card now and say, well, maybe why doesn't Yogi bunt him over? He's got a left-hand hitter up next, but I think if he did that, then you'd have to have Grody and Seaver driving him in. Uh, he'd look, probably load up the bases. So if Yogi wants to give Fergosi a chance to swing the bat here and, and not take it out of Crane Pool's hands also. Breaking pitch misses. It's 2-1. Seventeen years old when he first started playing for the Mets out of a high school in the Bronx. Ed Cranepool on deck. Drive right field. Back goes Clemente, one of the premier outfielders, but will he be able to go far enough? No, sir. Cobb had to hold up. Is now on his way home. Clemente's throw goes to the cutoff man, and it's held up. It's one to nothing. They had to hold up with a man like Clemente going after that ball and the wind blowing in. Clemente could not get to it. It's a double for Fergosi, so Staub and Fergosi have impressive debuts with the New York Mets. Stephen, I don't think that's going to happen again to Roberto Clemente. I don't think he knew Fergosi well enough. I think possibly the Pirates underestimated his power. Uh, Fergosi hit that ball a long way to right field, and I think Clemente was fooled. He was playing in shallow for a chance to possibly cut off the run at the plate or maybe even keep the runners from tagging up and going and the ball was hit over his head. A left-hander has begun to warm up for the Pirates as Cranepool had his best year last year, 14 home runs, 58 RBIs, first base open, Grody on deck, ground ball, it is foul. Picked up by the brand new first base coach of the Mets, Sheriff Robinson.
That is Luke Walker out there. Hit high in the air. Oliver scarred it in. Wet back. Now comes on fast. Stargell is there. Stargell takes it. The tag and the throw home. And down the line comes Cleon Jones. It's 2 nothing. Fregosi remains at second base, and here is Grody, 270 hitter, fine defensive catcher. Well, Doc Ellis got Harrelson, Boswell, and Agee, one, two, three, striking out two of them. The third he got on in a weak ground ball in the first inning. Since then, Staub, Jones, Fregosi, and all hit the ball hard and it's nothing. Popped up. Hepner comes out. San Gian is over. San Gian says, you've got it, Rich, and he does. That'll bring up Tom Seaver. That is Fergosi standing out at second base. A double in RBI in his first time up in the National League in the championship season. Seaver, pretty fair hitter, some cars, hit a couple of home runs in his career. Both against Montreal pitching. One in Montreal, one here. But when you consider he faced the Pirates twice last year and gave them just one run and struck out 24 men in 18 innings, a couple of runs is a lot to work with. Breaking pitch and strike. Top of the third inning out in Cincinnati. Dodgers and Reds are all tied, one apiece. The New York Mets announced today that they have retired Gil Hodges' number 14. The only other number they have retired, Cation Stengel, who served them for so many years, number 37. Fastball misses. The ball's one strike. up his glove saying that he has it and does but the Mets score two runs on three base hits no errors one man left we've gone through two innings now and the New York Mets lead the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates by that score of two to nothing nothing the Pirates trail the Mets top of the third and the top of the batting order Stennett Oliver and Clemente Stennett struck out looking in the first inning one of Sieber's four strikeout victims him off with a breaking pitch, ball one. Comes back with the fastball. He fouls it off to the right. Crane pool drops over, but it'll make the seat. Sure, I think uh, the Mets have new uniforms this year also. It seems like the Pirates, you can see that they're new. They're the double Mets, but the Mets got not a different appearing uniform, but evidently a different feeling uniform. They've gone to the double knit uniforms and all the players have said that it's the best feeling uniform they've ever worn. And I, I think that new freedom uh, of the double knit uh, type uniforms got to make a player feel a little bit better. One ball, two strikes. You can see the morning band on the left arm of Siva there. For Gil Hodges. He's stopping and he has trapped the ball. Base hit for Stennis. Rusty almost made a very good play, but a very dangerous play uh, with the leadoff hitter in an inning. If you let him go to second, if you if the ball gets by you, you can see him sort of dive here, and he just trapped it. If the ball gets by him, it's going all the way to the wall. It's going to be at least a triple or possibly an inside the park home for a home run for a fellow who runs as well as Stennett does. With nobody out, to try and keep the ball in front of you and just keep it to a single. Oliver hit a fastball and single to left back in the first inning. Makes a breaking pitch for strike one. Staub, I would imagine, is a little cold and wet now. That outfield is very, very wet. 
two strikes. Sure, and Tom Seaver's thrown quite a few pitches already. Uh, I think you can see that wet spot on Staub's uniform. But uh, Seaver has thrown quite a few pitches already in two plus innings. He threw 35 in the two innings and thrown about five or six this inning. He probably has about 41 in it. Pitching. And there was a good fastball up and in to Oliver. Uh, in the first inning, Oliver got the fastball down. He's a good low ball hitter, and he hit a line drive there. Tom got it up, and uh, Oliver just couldn't handle it. Five strikeouts now for Seaver. Stemming short first with one out from third. Here's Clemente, who struck out swinging at a high slider. Seaver got him on three pitches in the first inning. And at that time, Sandy commented a couple of them, the first two, Seaver didn't want to throw where he threw them, but Clemente took them and then went for the high breaking slot. It's begun to rain a little bit. Low and away, ball one. And umbrellas are up, and this is what everybody fears. But it's going to have to rain quite a bit for them to shut this one down. All the games they missed with a strike. High drive, Staub coming over, A.G. there, Rusty Staub says he has it, now chases it in the wind and takes it for the second out. That'll bring up Stargell. Now you can tell it's cold here, Sandy. Once one man goes out, the next man is ready to hit. You don't wait for him to walk over from the on-deck circle. They're ready to go. Two to nothing the score, top of the third. The Mets lead it, getting both their runs in the last of the second. Breaking pitch, strike one. Stargell struck out at a curveball, swinging at a curveball to end the first inning. Comes back with the fastball, one and one. Stargell has a tendency to strike out a lot, which makes it just a little bit incredi not incredi incredible, not the fact that he hit so many home runs last year, but he's also a 300 hitter, so he gets a good, good mileage out of the ball when he does hit it. Uh, a fellow who hits 300, you wouldn't think of him as a man who's going to strike out a lot. One ball, two strikes. Outfield pull way around to the right for Stargell, who hits a drive. A.G. by reflex started back when Stargell hits one and then had to come in and take it. So Steve after giving up the base hit to Senate gets Oliver, Clemente, and now Stargell. We go to the last of the third with the New York Mets leading the world champion Pittsburgh Pirates by the score of two to nothing. 